Did you? No. Calm the bitch down. Um, cheers. Uh. The end is never. Okay. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Why do all these people have observational windows? Very strange. Cheers, mistress. What the f- All right, rude. 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 What the Wow. Yes. This room. What a beautiful room. What a gorgeous, gorgeous room. Thank goodness Stanley had taken this detour on his way to the meeting room. Life without <laughs> having nice experienced room. this room was now too horrible even to consider. This room's my favorite room. I like this room because gray. Gray would be the color. Yes. Really, if I had really a worth heart. It being here in the room. A room so utterly captivating that even though all your co-workers have mysteriously vanished, here you sit looking at these chairs and some paintings. Really worth it. Come on, tell me. You make this all go away. You at this point, this Stanley's obsession with this away. room bordered on creepy and reflected poorly on his overall personality. It's possible that this is why everyone left. I just want something. I just want something I can never have. Cheers. Stanley sat around waiting for more dialogue, but when a long time had passed and there was no more, he decided that the game was trying to send him a message. I don't know if I'm actually playing a game or not, Sheepy, let's be honest. It is, the end is never, so I don't know, I don't know. <coughs> but at last, he'd had enough of the amazing room and took the first open door on his left to get back to business. Or I didn't. Ooh, new room! Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Oh, I'm gonna die in this room. Oh my god. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for her. <gasps> is there a hot this bitch? Is it, your chance to redeem yourself, to put your work aside, to let her back into your life. She's been waiting. Where is she? <laughs> I know how this movie ends. Hmm. That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this, to reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. Okay, this is my moment, everybody. I'm gonna be so fucking smooth. I'm gonna be like, sup, bitch? What's he wearing? Is it hot? I'm sorry, what? Sweetie, sorry to keep you waiting. I'm just pulling the bread out of the oven. All right.
Okay, there we go. All right, now, I want you to come in and tell me all about your day. Ah! What the <laughs> fuck? No! Gotcha. Uh -uh. Oh, come on. Did you actually think you had a loving wife who'd want to commit their life to you? I'm trying to make a point here, Stanley. I'm trying to get you to see something. Come inside. Let me show you what's really going on here. Oh my fuck yourself. Are you kidding? I don't- Sorry, but you're in my story now. No, I don't want to do that, though. No. Hmm. This is a very sad story about the death of a man named Stanley. Come! I'm sorry. Nothing? Stanley is quite a boring fellow. He has a job that demands nothing of him, and every button that he pushes is a reminder of the inconsequential nature of his existence. I don't want to do what he says. I don't, I can't jump. I'd like to, I'd like a jump. Look at him there, pushing buttons, doing exactly what he's told to do. Now he's pushing a button. Now he's eating lunch. Now I did. he's going Bad. home. <laughs> now he's coming back to work. One might even feel sorry for him, except that he's chosen this life. But in his mind, ah, in his mind, he can go on fantastic adventures. From behind his desk, Stanley dreamed of wild expeditions into the unknown, fantastic I'm discoveries magical. of new lands. It was wonderful. And each day that he returned to work was a reminder that none of it would ever happen to him. And so he began to fantasize about his own job, First, he imagined that one day while at work, he stepped up from his desk to realize that all of his co-workers, his boss, everyone in the building had suddenly vanished off the face of the earth. The thought excited him terribly. So, he went further. He imagined that he came to two open doors and that he could go through either. At last, choice. It barely even mattered what lay behind each door. The mere thought that his decisions would mean something was almost too wonderful to behold. This is mean! As he wandered through this fantasy world, he began to fill it with many possible paths and destinations. Down one path lay an enormous round room with monitors oh. and mind controls. And down another was a yellow line that weaved in many directions. And down another was a game with a baby. And he called it the Stanley Parable. A game with a baby? It was such a wonderful fantasy. And so in his head, he relived it again. And then again. And again. Over and over. Wishing beyond hope that it would never end. That he might always feel this free. Surely there's an answer down some new path, mustn't there be? Perhaps if he played just one more time. Press 8 to tell your wife you love her. But there is no answer. How could there possibly be? I pressed In reality, first. all he's doing is pushing the same buttons Press he to always watch Twitch. Has. <laughs> Nothing has changed. The longer he spends here, the more invested he gets, the more he forgets which life is the real one. Can I hide? <gasps> and I'm trying to tell him this, that in this world, he can never be anything but an observer, that as long as he remains here, he's slowly killing himself. But he won't listen to me. He won't stop. Here, watch this. Stanley, the next time the screen asks you to push a button, do not do it. You see? Can he just not hear me? How can I tell him in a way that he'll understand that every second he remains here, he's electing to kill himself? How can I get him to see what I see? How can I make him look at himself? <laughs> Press the O to question nothing. I suppose I can't. Not in the way I want him to. 
But I don't make the rules. I simply play I to my intended PP. purpose, the same as Stanley. We're not so different, I suppose. I'll try once more to convey all this to him. I'm compelled to. I must. Perhaps, well, maybe this time he'll see. Maybe this time. <laughs> and I tried again, and Stanley pushed a button. And I tried again, and Stanley pushed a button. And I tried. What the fuck? <laughs> no, shut up. Fucking weird dog. I can't even type at my own computer. Rude. How long was I sitting there? Stanley wondered to himself. <laughs> Minutes? Days? Centuries? Did something crucial happen while my senses were turned? He made a note to be more careful with time from now on. I... I have not. No. Digging through my library of unplayed games, and this was one of them. <laughs> Hello. Hello. I gave it a put. You're welcome. <gasps> there... Nope. Bye. Never gonna open a door. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Fine. Boring, I guess. Cheers. That's more fun. I don't know. How do I know? I have no idea if it's a deluxe deluxe edition deluxe edition. No clue. I'm um, I'm assuming you all will know at a certain point. Otherwise, it wouldn't be worth it, right? Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Eight bird. Mergers, acquisitions, financial panic meeting, we're broke Wednesdays, pranking floor five meeting. <laughs> what to do about 432? Don't tell 422 about meeting. That's funny. Tomorrow, complete today's unfinished <laughs> agenda items. Write next day's agenda, reflect. <laughs> Standardized graphs, not cost efficient. <laughs> 40 times wide. Push for funding for R&D and new coffee machine. Get Chris out of the broom closet. <laughs> uh, synergize papers? Hire someone to synergize papers. Papers are too synergized. Fire paper guy. Hire somebody to fire the paper synergizing guy. Who moved my desk? Please keep the targets on the topic of... Oh... To do, synergize core value expenditures, shift global market parade, mon monetize free to play, solving inter. Uh. Oh, what are your dreams for the future? Success, plant life, football, <laughs> comatose, <laughs> clear spring, mitosis. <laughs> Tips for not getting fired talk less, do unbelievably amazing work all the time every day with no expe expe expectation of promotion or recognition. Don't get fired. How to solve a dispute with a coworker. Let it ball up inside of you. Take it out passive aggressively on other coworkers. Resent coworkers for not supporting you more. Using slides to assure employees that everything is okay. Make sure your slide has a slick blue graphic in the header and throw some bevel on all the text. This will ensure a calm and productive work environment. Stanley just stood there doing nothing at all. He seems to think <laughs> Everyone I have nothing is better unique. to do with my time than to <laughs> sit around and describe every fascinating little detail of his inability to do anything. This <laughs> is why Stanley and I are on such good terms. Number of slides on this slide. Charts, slides, charts, and slides. Rate at which charts on this same slide depict the same information. <laughs> okay. Rate of increase in graphs per slide. 
<laughs> uh, colored in segment. What is hot? Profits. Stripes. Requires more secondary research. <laughs> uh, Bi-quarterly post review review. We need less reviews. 402 and 405 want to get rid of the death sport portion in the primary review schedule. The fuck? But I think that's a stupid idea. More water coolers. More water cooler heaters. Charts need to be more hip to appeal to teenage demographic. Find teenagers to put in teenage demographic. Big net? Some sort of child trap? Okie doke. It got weird. It got weird. Oh! I opened a door! Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. I like it here, though, strange man. I like there it. was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow. <laughs> Just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. This is my home now. A little floor. It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. <laughs> Are you, are you really still in the broom closet? <laughs> Standing around doing nothing? Why? Please offer me some explanation here. I'm, I'm genuinely confused. If you're happy and you know it, clap your pants. You if do you're... realize there's no choice or anything in here, right? If I'd said Stanley walked past the broom closet, at least you would have had a reason for exploring it to find out. But it didn't even occur to me because literally this closet <laughs> is of absolutely no significance to the story whatsoever. <laughs> I never would have thought to mention it. I knew there'd be a door I could open eventually. Maybe to you this is somehow its own branching path. Maybe when you go talk about this with your friend you'll say, Oh, did you get the broom closet ending? The broom <laughs> closet ending was my favorite. I hope your friends find this concerning. This is a mod closet. Stanley was fat and ugly and really, really stupid. He probably only got the job because of a family connection. That's how stupid he is. That or with drug money. Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. <laughs> what? Well, I've come to a very definite conclusion about what's going on right now. You're dead. You got to this broom closet, explored it a bit, and were just about to leave because there's nothing here when a physical malady of some sort shut down your central nervous system and you collapsed on the keyboard. <laughs> when in a situation like this, the responsible thing is to alert someone nearby so as to ensure that your body is taken care of before it begins to decompose. <laughs> Hello? Anyone who happens to be nearby? The person at this computer is dead. He or she has fallen prey to any number of your countless human physiological vulnerabilities. It's indicative of the long-term sustainability of your species. Please remove their corpse from the area and instruct another human to take their place at the computer, making sure they understand basic first-person video game mechanics Sales, and you love your bucket. on the history of narrative tropes in video gaming so that the irony and insightful commentary of this game is not lost on them. <laughs> All right, when you've done that, just step out into the hallway. Game is ridiculous. <laughs> yes, I do. Bucket, 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 bucket. <laughs> shit like this seriously i love it am i done in the broom closet i made a silly i want the duct tape <gasps> oh 
the bottle bar. That's small. Can I be in charge of the duct tape? Apparently, because I'm not even allowed to pick it up. I get that rainbow wrench. Murder! Ah, second player. It's good to have you on board. I okay. guarantee you can't do any worse than the person who came before you. You, too? Unbelievable. <laughs> I'm at the mercy of an entire species of invalids. Perhaps there's a monkey nearby you can hand the controls to. A fish? Fungus? Look, you can hammer out the details. I'm not particularly <laughs> picky. Fungus. I'll just be waiting for when you're ready to pick up the story again. I like this place. It's quiet. That's an old broom. Did I piss him off? If you're happy and you know it. If you're happy and you know it. If you're happy and you know it and you really want to show it. Okay. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. It probably smelled really clean, right? It was probably quiet, peaceful. What the fuck, Sin? What in the deep fried Mary Magdalene? <gasps> it's an executive bathroom. Oh, okay. <laughs> Have you checked your butthole? Skeet up, skeet up. I'm so sorry, kills, if you're in chat right now, lurk lurking. Ooh, are those joints? Business time. Are hostile, wait, 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 what? I can't read it, I don't know. Those look like blunts to me though, sick. Ooh. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. <laughs> Amazing. Cute. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Holy fart. Oh, no, it's not pretty in there. I like it here. No, you. I didn't want to. Mm -mm. Fine. Piss shit. I like how the bars. Okay, fine. This seems pleasant. No, thank you. Ah, floating. Oh shit, the end is never floating. Descending deeper into the building. Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Low blood sugar. What the fuck? What's that? What's that? 
What are those? Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Uh. I mean... That one sounds fun. That one looks cold. YOLO? Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. Can I run? The door behind him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. Finally! At this point, Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death. Wow. What the fuck? Jesus, why won't you take me? As the machine whirred into motion and Stanley was inched closer and closer to his demise, it reflected that his life had been of no consequence whatsoever. Stanley can't see the bigger picture. He doesn't know the real story, trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this world is. Perhaps his death was of no great loss, like plucking the eyeballs from a blind man. And so he resigned and willingly accepted this violent end to his brief and shallow life. There was Stanley. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator as Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, killing him instantly. God damn it. And yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as alive as ever. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? Freedom from the hellscape. There's got to be an edge, right? Oh. Oh. <laughs> it's very white. Is this hell? When every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you see now? Do you see that Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? Nature paintings. That, I mean. Here. Here. Stanley is pewter. Oh. Uh, the office layout. Q. The blueprint shows the office from the beginning of the game. The path is the path from the path. I can read. The path from Stanley's office to the two doors was the first part of the game with, that was built. Sections have been added and altered throughout development. Through the core layout, remains almost identical to the first iteration. Am I a gibble? Filing cabinets. Sick. 
Barbara. I gotta call Barb. The office.